Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and in today's little dev update we are going to talk about the uh, current ongoing open beta of the Light Campaign V4.1 big milestone release and that has seen uh, four, four patches since. Yes, we are on uh, 4.1.4 .4 at the moment. Um, yeah, it was, was the launch was pretty good. We haven't had a little dev update in a while, haven't we? Um, launch was pretty good apart from lots of issues, but those were quickly fixed with a burst of fixing uh, on the first day already. So like, uh, maybe first day, was 25 hours later or something. Um, anyway, that was reasonably quickly sorted and since then we have been um, adding fixes breaking things again and a new and new things completely broken but we are getting ever closer to a version that is fully enjoyable by uh, all of you and uh, the with the last uh, update we also uh, eliminated that uh, that bad uh, nuking your cars when you try to load in two of them in the same photo scene. Uh, yeah, that was wasn't great, was it? Uh, but yes, yeah, so we're currently working on quite a few um, more things. For instance, we are um, pretty close to sorting out lights for good. And those, uh, let's take a look here, are already looking quite good when you are manually assigning the materials to them. Um, and if you do not, then, well, it's uh, not working just yet. What we are currently working on there is, well, first of all, hook up the lights correctly to the materials and then uh, have good defaults in there. I don't need that tab. Uh, have good defaults in there so that you can just apply your fixtures as you would normally and the fixture already has baked in a good first guess for what kinds of lights you would be expecting from them. So um, let's uh, head off to the photo scene and just uh, talk a little bit about gizmo and lights and all that good stuff. Alright, so rotating it around here, as you can see our, our little gizmo thingy is quite more advanced than it was at the, at the start. And uh, let's just see if we can get the camera um, focused on the car. There we go. Um, we can also, of course, hide the gizmo if we still want to have the car selected, but the gizmo gone. Uh, easy to do there. Gizmo is hidden. Click to change. And, oh, right. One one thing up first. Let's unhide it. Um, in some of the iterations in the open beta, we've had extremely sensitive controls. Uh, yeah, it was probably most versions. But now, there are controls for that and the general range of sensitivity is a lot more reasonable. So if you go in here in the advanced settings for the gizmo, you can select the sensitivity manually for um, both translation, the rotation and scaling. And that is now in a much more reasonable range. But if you are coming from a previous version, a previous patch version, uh, then these might be completely off scale, like over here somewhere, because that was the initial value they were set to, which was uh, like insanity. And now if you just pull it pull it in there, it will be uh, reacting reasonably. Oh, uh, unless you do that. Ah, that's much better. Uh, okay, so um, now if you want to uh, slow down rotation very much, yeah, well, you can. And also... Oh! Funny things happen when you when you move cars around, don't you? Uh, don't, don't they? Uh, so yes, rotation and all that can be set manually. Also, we've added a new feature to snap to the best angles, um, which is quite handy. So you see how it's stepped now, and it isn't stepped at all when you have that off. So you can set manual snapping and angles, which is really handy. And also, gizmo size. If you don't like it in the size that it is presented at, there you go. You can simply change it. Um, we do have the green and the yellow sphere for the gizmo. Um, oh, it's actually in the car, isn't it? Yes. And the um, yellow one is mode switching. Shouldn't be in the photo scene. And the green one is just accept. So quite handy. It's basically uh, the same way it was in the old gizmo. But with all the added functionality of the new one. Scaling in different planes. 
um, rotating around in different ways and so on. So really, really handy that new uh, functionality. We shall also take a look at that for 2D fixtures in a moment. This is what you're going to see as the default at the moment, that nothing happens. And that is because the light materials aren't correctly set. So let me head back and show you how that is done. And just be aware, at the moment, they are not actually saving. So you have to manually set them every time, which is very annoying and is going to get fixed. Um, so don't fret. Now, here we have our 2D fixture controls. I've set the gizmo size a little small, maybe. Um, although it depends on what you want to do. Tiny! Oh, lights. Let's activate, for instance, this one as our... Um, uh, should it be the tail light? This can be the brake light, like this. And then this can be our normal tail light, I guess. Oh no, this is the reversing light. Ah, oh, there we had it. So you just click these little icons in the top right corner in order to change the functionality of the light. And there we have the reversing light. Tail light, reversing light, and brake light. So now just one of them is set. Let me do the other one as well. And I've set this one now, the outer one, to an indicator. Uh, yeah, this setup should be working. So let's head over to the photo scene. And let's hide the gizmo. There we have that. Looking good. Uh, car and uh, let's activate the lights. There we have it. As you can see, they are being activated. Um, why are the indicators on the... Oh, that is actually because they are so bright on the outside that they look lit up as well. So you can see there, if we flash them, that's a little fast. Thank you very much. Yeah, that seems about right. Let's zoom in there. As you can see, that is working nicely. And if we now put on the reversing lights, that should come on. Yes. And tail lights. Okay. Now it's the brake lights that are on there. That's cool. Um, also, now let's try something that m some of you might not know already, and that is that you can adjust the brightness for things beyond the 100. Isn't that handy? So let's give it something like uh, 500. There we go. Oh, yes. This is now proper bright, isn't it? And let's put back on the taillights. Oh, yeah, they're becoming a little bright as well. Um, Yes, okay, S solar flares coming in soon. Uh, now let's go to something a little bit uh, higher. Something like 10,000 or even higher. Let's add a few more decimals and, uh, or not decimals, like points. Oh, this is getting a little too bright. You can't even see color anymore. One more. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we have laser hamster alert. Laser hamster alert. But yes, you, you can... Um, <laughs> this reminds me of a, a certain emoji that is used a lot in the automation channel. Um, you can play with that uh, as you like and create some cool effects with it. It's still a little weird with the materials and how they react. They are not very consistent at the moment, but it's getting there. We are tweaking it and completing its functionality as we speak. Also, uh, it is photo scene dependent. Oh my god. I'm blind. This is one one hundred. No, is it one million brightness or something? <laughs> Not recommended for uh, using cars. Just just think about it. Drive that car at night. Hit the brakes and see everyone behind you crash. Wouldn't that be uh, kind of entertain entertaining until you are in prison? Anyway, two uh, D gizmo is next topic. Uh, one that is very controversial because we destroy lives by changing the gizmo. Uh, no, the old one is not coming back, but instead what we're going to do is to make the new one actually good. And much has gone into doing so already, and we'll continue to tweak. Um, one of the new functionalities, or one of the major changes, is that you now have all the old controls that you had, and then some, in this new uh, version of the gizmo. And you have the OK button there. This is the mode switch. This is just translation, i.e. moving. Uh, rotation remains uh, in both modes. And this is the default mode, mode, which is scaling. And if you just want to deselect the fixture and you're OK with it, you press the green little sphere and you're good. Why is it a sphere and not a button? Well, mm, because a sphere is, is looks the same from all directions. That is why. 
Um, also, if you're unhappy with gizmo size, of course, change it there. Um, and yes, one of the new features in here is the dimension that previously was unavailable and that is depth you can now change the depth of fixtures which is very nice for some of those fixtures especially grills and stuff where which you no doubt have been working with um and very very good very good to have that finally in there um and then you can always switch to 3d mode as well and there haven't been that many complaints about the 3d mode gizmo because well that's kind of the norm of how it's supposed to be but yeah there's also the same thing uh, we have changed the 2d gizmo to make it uh, the same basically as the 3d gizmo but adapted to the limited number of dimensions uh, that you have because you are bound to the conforming mesh of the car at that point so uh, yeah, um, we're continued, going to continue to tweak this until it is right for almost all players. Can never get all of them to agree that this is uh, a good change, of course, as with everything else. But yeah, um, I think this has come a long way already and is quite usable as of now. Uh, one more thing that you are probably very happy to hear is that we just fixed the um, bug where uh, the body was spawning twice when you selected another body you could see that oh well there are two bodies on top of each other and that was uh, that was handled now so you're going to have uh, this bug fixed in the next patch uh, which should be out this week of course and yeah let's uh, head over to campaign and some of that discussion and then uh, yeah what is going on in campaign well um, it's still quite exploitable and that is because mainly of the pre-order system and also there's still some ui elements which are not not giving you the information you quite need um, but it is also getting there and we are planning on having another about uh, five to seven patches i would think in uh, open beta before we merge it with uh, the default branch which hopefully is the case before um before christmas that is our target get it all done and merged up before christmas and before then we also have to start doing some of the tweaking for the balance of the campaign because that has not been touched at all and why is that? Well, because not all features have been in until kind of now and still a few things that are missing or weird. Um, one thing that I want to show you as an illustration of why currently uh, sometimes the game is extremely easy is that competitors, your AI competitors, which are limited to regions now as just like you if you have a competitor and that is selling their cars uh, based on uh, based in Gazmir then they only have access to Gazmir and Hedvesia at the start so you won't even see that competitor if you are starting in Ferenia so it's realistic in that way and uh, yeah so uh, that means that there's less competition and if then a competitor has picked the wrong car body it is extremely sensitive to that at the moment. Let's let's take this one as, ex as an example, just to illustrate. I think I've mentioned this before, but uh, it's worth mentioning again because this needs to change. We need to get rid of the system, uh, which is the body boxes for the cars, and generalize them, but not dumb them down. Uh, currently, body boxes are defined by the maker of the body, and everyone ends up at slightly different things. And sometimes this, that slightly number is not slightly, but majorly. So, for instance, this one, 2.9 meter wheelbase, 1940s car, right? So we have 1,800 cabin volume there. And then let's see the direct competitor to this one, uh, 2.8. Oh, let's go to the, uh, yeah, yeah, 2.8 meter wheelbase, basically the same. Um, 726 so if you want to uh, cater to this elusive but very prestigious sardine market then i think you are going to go with this one and they will be highly pleased um but yeah you can see that especially when it's about comfort or 
prestige, no, not prestige, not so much, but the comfort rating will be absolutely garbage tier if you select this body. And the AI that is building their cars as your competitors doesn't know about this stuff. It just looks at wheelbase and uh, is it the right body type and then it assumes it is a functional body you're picking. But no, these are not. So, uh, well, too bad then. You get half the competitiveness of what you should have. Uh, yeah, and that's not great. And that is why, a big reason why uh, your competition is somewhat weak in uh, many instances. And the, so the um, fix to that already is kind of working in spreadsheet. It is going to be uh, based off of wheelbase. It's going to be based off the, the width of the car, track, track width of the car, the height of the body and the length of the body. And then uh, considering overhang, front and rear, uh, along with the body type to determine what the cargo size and the cabin size should be. And once we have that system implemented, you will also see more realistic volumes. For instance, a modern day um, compact car, mid, mid, mid range compact. Uh, so like 2.6 meter wheelbase, like an average size car, should have a cabin volume as a sedan, for instance, of about 3000 liters. Uh, yeah. Well, what, the sardine, sardine stuff? Okay, well, this is a tiny car, but uh, there are some really tiny bodies in here. Of course, the um, if all cars in here are too small, then the game mechanics don't favor one over the other, but uh, the general scale is important still, and the difference between the car bodies currently is just insane for how little difference there should be. Um, so once this is fixed, and it will be a big fix, an entirely new system we have to implement for that. But that's something that we really need to look into to make, to smoothen out the campaign play, um, especially. And also uh, sandbox play, because when you guys are doing challenges, well, uh, yeah, sucks to be you if you've picked the wrong body in air quotes, right? And uh, that is not great. So, yep, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to having that fixed. But this is just one of the small things that uh, we'll have huge huge uh, consequences for how well the game is playing anyway i think that um, is a decent quick look into what we are currently working on and what's going on so i hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time